Hi everyone and welcome. I am Kim Beegler, the owner of Youthful Fiber Farm and Mill, and I am sitting here in the wool mill today. If you are new, welcome. And let me introduce you to Wish. Here she is, the mill cat, um, the ever so gracious mill cat. And if you're returning, thank you for coming back. Uh, I'm gonna be talking about wool. This is a vlog all about wool and knitting and processing wool for a living and all those things. So welcome. I don't have a ton to share this week. I do have some mill videos, a little bit of washing, a little bit of carding, a little bit, just a little bit, ooh, even a little bit of skirting, I think. Um, maybe a box unboxing of a fleece. That's pretty exciting. Um, I don't get to do that very often. So that was pretty fun. And I wanted to touch bases just on some of the projects that I'm working on to share. So here we go. Let's just jump right in. Right. Okay. Um, don't forget if you like what I'm doing, please hit the subscribe button, hit the little bell. So you get notified when a new one comes out and, um, head to my website. If you want to get on my newsletter, because those are the people that get first dibs, seemingly first dibs at new product as it comes out. But I do have stuff in the online shop right now, which is very exciting. And I get to show you all. So, okay. Let's just start with works in project because works in project works in progress, uh, because I've got some fun ones. Okay. So first let's just calliope it up, right? The, the sweater knit along. And I'm hoping just to pop on with some of the other knit alongers next week for just like a quick 10 or 15 minute video to see where everybody's at. Cause that'll be just about the halfway point one month in and you all, I don't knit a sweater in two months. So I didn't make this a challenge because I don't want it to not be fun, but I was like, let me see if realistically I can do this in two months. And, um, I think I can, I really do. Okay. Here we are on my Calliope. Is it in the screenshot? Yes. Um, making good progress. So obviously I don't know if I had split for the sleeves last week, but I've split for the sleeves and now I'm just cruising. I'm just cruising on the body now. Um, and this is sincere sheep, the Cormo I've got it in our online shop Cormo and held with a mohair that was dyed from utopia. Let me get up so you can see it's got a beautiful halo. I'm so happy with how it's turning out and I'll show you the yarn colors I've got here. Um, there we go. So this is the sincere sheep, the Cormo fingering. And then this is my dyed. And I just, I'm really happy with how they are turning out together. I've got both those colors in the online shop. So jump over there. If you're interested in this color combo, um, there it is. I'm going to try it on. I think tonight I've tried it on once but it's time to try on again because uh, we're a couple inches into the body. And I told you all that I was, um, I kind of made myself a schedule, which was the first two weeks getting through. I'll tell you my schedule. The first two weeks was getting through um, the collar and just getting basically separating for my sleeves, right? Doing the shirt was separating for the sleeves. I think that was my first two weeks. Then, and I stayed up that last night, making sure I was like at my sleeves being separated. Then I want, then it's like the body, right? So ideally, ideally I said a month on the body, but I probably need, need more than a week per sleeve. I may mix up the sleeves a bit. I think I may finish out. Um, I think I've talked about this, but finish out these skeins or finish out where I can finish out and then start on my sleeves. We'll see. I don't really mind knitting sleeves. So we'll see how I'm feeling when I get there, but ideally, I'd be through the body in by the end of February, which I'm already um, close to three inches in and you need, I think it's as says nine inches and then you're ribbing. So um, I should be able to plow through. I'm only doing two, st two rows a day is my minimum. Two rows a day y'all, because I wanted to be able to knit this and I'm not really knitting on anything else. So that should be clarified. Um, I wanted to be able to knit this, but not feel guilty about doing other things. And I thought, well, if I just kind of keep on a specific track, I should be good. So we'll see. It's just kind of like a, there we are. Speaking of working on other things. So last week I had started a spin with that wool top and guess what? Bobbin number one, check. Can you see the colors? 
not as good of a lighting as at home. But this has got some rusty, it's got some blues. I can't quite get it in the right light. Maybe if I like, I don't know you all. It's got some rusty, some blues. I'll put it down in a minute and I'll show you. Um, and it's got some brown to it. So it's, ooh, the light's gonna fade now. There it is. The sunlight went away, of course. It's Oregon, just wait a couple of minutes. So, um, and this is full. I probably could have filled this up a little bit more because people do ask me, you know, how much do you fill your bottle? I usually fill up to like, till the sides are full, right? So I do, but the Nano just does not have the greatest uptake strength and so by the time i get here i'm like okay let's call it good i don't feel like um fighting with your tension anymore to get this thing completely full so we're there all right so it's time for my next top because i'm going to go back and forth i'm going to spin my um multicolor and then i'm going to spin one that way i can ply uh, I'm not stuck to just like spinning, spinning, spinning the same thing also, which gets a little, and then I don't know. Anyway, that's how I'm gonna do it. So this is a beautiful kind of variegated blues, and it's got some greens in there too, from Dicentra. I showed this last time, and the reason I'm doing these together, which now you may not be able to see, but I am using, I'll lay this down and show you, um, because the sun came back. But I basically was taking one of the colors, the kind of bluey green color out of the multicolor top. And I picked that as my other color. And I'm gonna show you something really fun in a minute, comparing some other skeins that I did. It'll make more sense in a minute. So here we are, my new thing of top. Um, she has her own way of braiding. So yeah, I think this is braided. Um, and I don't know that it would, let's see, we'll go from the other side. I don't think it matters too much which way we go from, but I'm gonna do the same thing. This one, I'm not gonna worry as much about the color changes because yeah, we're going from the other end, much easier. I'm not gonna worry as much about the color changes because they're not as dramatic. You know, they're all kind of in the same league. So I'll probably um, open this up all the way like I did before, and I can start it right here right now probably will have lots of cat hair on it, but that's okay. So if I take one, and these are a little bit thinner. Um, if I take one and I'm just gonna start with that whole opening, like unrolling, which this is gonna do. So I'm just gonna kind of unroll one part of the top and then I'll go through the whole braid Get it topped. Ooh, I can tell this is going to be a beautiful, wonderful spin. And this is BFL, 100% BFL. Um, so I'm going to do that. And then I'm just going to, I'll probably, I don't even weigh it when I'm on my nano. Sometimes I'll weigh out my fiber if I have four ounces, you know, two and two. So I know the bob, I'm not going to do that with my nano because the, the bobbins are so small. You can just kind of keep going, keep going and keep going. So I'm going to prep it all width wise. Then I will strip some of it down lengthwise and start spinning there. Um, and like I said, I'm not gonna worry too much about the color repeats because they're not so drastic. When I put it up with this other much more drastic color change in the, in the multicolored top, um, when I ply them together, it's, well, you're gonna see what it's gonna do because I have a pretty awesome example. And I'll try to do it again with this yarn in a minute. So let me cut to, let's pop over and I'm going to try making sure I have it on record wouldn't that be sad? Okay, Wish is on my lap, so we got to move her. And then I'm going to just flip the screen, hopefully. And so here we are at this beautiful yarn. So for those of you listening, I have three different skeins of yarn laying out side by side. And this is, if any of you watch on Instagram, I put up this, um, this reel went insane, where I showed this finished kind of pink, very great gated yarn. So I wanted to show you the difference because it's pretty fantastic. Okay, this first bigger skein is what I did most of the yarn in because this is the second skein. So I had a multicolored top. It was, um, you can see there's like a dark pink. There is kind of a yellowy gold in there and lighter pinks. Okay, and I think there was some gray too. So it was a variegated top. I plied, after I spun it, I plied half of it with a very like tonal pink. So the other, so I had one bobbin that was a, multicolored top and the other bobbin was just kind of varying shades of pink and I plied it together and this is the outcome here 
and I absolutely love it. Okay, so this one, I had some, some ends on my bobbins. So this is what would have happened if I would not have done that, that pink tonal color and I just would have spun the fiber from that top and plied it together. So you can see how much more saturated the colors are. And I'll tell you why I was not loving this yellowy gold color. I just wasn't loving it when I spun it up. I'm still not, I still like it a lot better on the lighter color. Um, and I think you all can see that well enough, especially if you're on your TV. If you're listening, pop over. There's a link if you want to see what I'm talking about here. So one skein was a pink and the um, multicolored top. One skein is the multicolored plied together, which is like how lots of people would spin. Here's one more. I had some more of the multicolor. It was mostly the sil like kind of grays and yellows, but you'll be able to see I applied this with a really light brown color. And it, part so here, let me pull apart that actually had the pink in it. Whoops, and I hit the, so you can see how the same top, either you could apply it with itself, apply it with a pink, apply it with a brown, and what a drastic difference it makes in the finished yarn. Isn't that fascinating? Just like uh, play with colors. So in the one I'm doing now, let's scoot these out of the way. We've got that. There you go. You can see that color beautifully. There's our bobbin of multicolored. And then we've got this. So it's going to just completely change how this yarn was when I apply them together. This would have been a pretty muted yarn with these, this kind of gold and brown, not gold, rusty red and brown and that dark, deep blue. But when I apply it with this multicolor top, it's gonna, it's just gonna be a completely different yarn than how it started out. And I am doing this, this, I probably, unless I completely freak out and change my mind, I probably would have enjoyed this plied on itself because it's much more dark deep colors and and the color variations wouldn't have shown up as much i don't love as much with this those color variations when i did it with the pink on the pink or with the um pink top on the pink top. it's just not it's just like too much for me i liked it a little more muted um so we'll see you know i might do a plyback sample just to make sure that i am liking but i want this yarn to pop and also be a little bit easier to knit, quite honestly. And um, I think that that's gonna do it. So there you go. There's where we're at there. I wanted to show you while I have got these fibers sitting and I would love your comments. Tell me what you think. You think I'm going horribly wrong by um, applying this deep multicolor with this, I wouldn't call it bright, but with these blues. Let me know, let me know, let me know. Okay, I wanted to show you because I have had a restock on these little wrap per inch yarn gauges and they've got me on the back um, logo on the back so these are just little wood notched out and you can see it's got hopefully you can see um, there's notches on it where you can lay your yarn across it and then it gives you a vague idea of what you have hand spun of course this is great too if you have yarn at home that you lost the label for and you're like i don't know what size it is so it just goes from super bulky down to lace weight and i wanted to show you that all i do when i use these because i am lazy i don't count my wraps per inch it's like too much work for me for some reason what i'll do is just take some yarn and let me see if i can whoop wrong way I'll scroll in a little bit there so you can see what i do is i just take my yarn and I just lay it across here. Like, okay, that looks like a solid fingering. You don't stretch it, you just lay it. So I'm not putting a lot of tension on it. If I go up to the sport weight, it just is like, there's too much space in that gap that I would call it a sport weight. I'd say it's more a fingering. And I'll go through a little bit because of course my hand spun is not 100% perfect and most of us isn't. So, you know, I'm gonna say it's between a fingering most of it's gonna fall into the fingering, but I can see some that I bet would be more of a sport. So that would be more of a sport. So it's gonna fall somewhere in the fingering. I think a majority of it is more on the fingering side. So anyway, these are in my website because they are kind of a, a favorite. Woo, that's really close to my hand. Let's move back. And uh, okay, 
There's our talking wool top and hand spinning for the day. Fun, fun. Okay, we're gonna click back and I'll talk to you face to face again here. Okay, we're back with me. Okay, so what's happening at the mill? Now that we've talked about the projects I am working on, make sure everything's still set up here. Um, mill time. So I'm working on fiber club. Does it seem like I always, I think I say that every time too. Does it seem like I'm always working on fiber club? Anyway, fiber club is like going out the door and I think it's like the seventh maybe. So this is really early for me, but it's going out the door. And then I will have, and I show some videos. I show videos of what's going on back at the mill. I've got at the washer. I know I've got a carter. Um, an unboxing, which is really exciting. And um, anyway, I know coming up after Fiber Club, I'll be running some Prineville, which I show a little bit of the fiber in the videos coming up. But Prineville is, I kind of designed it to be a sock yarn. When I was making yarn, I designed it to be a sock yarn, although you can use it for anything. I've made a cowl out of it. Um, it's a border lester and mohair blend. I think it's about 80-20. It's been a while <laughs> since I've made it. So, but I'm going to run it in white. So it'll be natural white border luster, natural white mohair. That'll be coming up next. Watch out. And also there will be some Shetland lamb. Uh, I have, for some reason, I have a white Shetland lamb fleece from Alexis that I never carded. So um, watch out for that. Another great reason to either jump into my Patreon community where they get first dibs at just about everything or to get on my newsletter where they get second dibs at just about everything. So, um, but some other things that are restocked. There is some natural colored white Romney restocked in the online shop. So Perfect for beginners, especially, but you can't go wrong with a Romney. Um, speaking of Romney, Halsey blend. I have not done this in a while. So this is restocked in the online shop. This is Romney, alpaca, and silk. Um, I used to make yarn out of this. The roving is a dream to spin also. And so this is just the white, but I am hoping after I get through a little batch of stuff, I'll be moving on to more of the gray. So there will be some gray coming soon. There is a Merino video in here. I know because I decided to go ahead. I think in the last video I said, uh, I might sell this. I don't know. Anyway, I carded it up. Here she is. And you all, there's still some of this Merino left. There's not a lot, but there's still a couple four ounce bumps of this beauty left. There is a little bit of pilling in it, um, but it still spins up really, really well. Some of the pills will attenuate as you're spinning and some of them you can leave or you can pick. It just depends on you. If you can't stand there being any imperfections in your fiber, um, this is not the fiber for you, but uh, it's gonna, it's so luscious and beautiful. So there's a little bit of this natural white merino the online shop so jump in there um, there is also coming within the next day or two I'll have some restock and some new colors of utopia's mohair silk yarn so if you're loving the one that I have I do have some of that in stock um, but I have some new colors coming too and a restock of some that ran out so jump in there okay let's head over let's check out some mill videos and hopefully you'll learn something new Hopefully. I always am here to try to um, give you some good content and some good things and some lessons I learned along the way. Okay. I will see you all in a minute. Enjoy the videos, videos of what's going on at the mill. And actually, we're going to start of one going to visit the Shetlands really quick because they are getting shorn within the next two to three weeks. And um, I wanted you to see the wool on them. Do you like this tail? Wishes tails up under my chin. Um, see the wool on them before they get shorn because it's a lot of wool. Okay, see you in a minute. All right, I wanted to show you how much wool these babies have. Sorry, my dogs are going to, because hopefully they will be shorn very, very, very soon. There's Jojo. There's a lot of wool. Sorry, they're eating, so they're moving around. Roland is a great example. They are tiny under there. So hopefully next time I show them will be their shearing day because they are ready.
All right, unboxing this fleece that I bought from Sister Sheep. They are in Colorado. I've watched them. Ooh, this is a beautiful job of packaging. Oops, I've watched them for a while. And here is whew, this fleece. It is a fine wool, a raw Moldale cross, and I'm very excited to get to process it. Ooh, and it's in beautiful shape. Yay! All right, I had to share this wool with you. This is Border Lester that I uh, get from way, way out in Eastern Oregon. It is, every time I work with one of their fleeces, I, I have forgotten, and then I'm like, are you kidding me? Look at this wool. I mean, it is just absolutely beautiful. So I'm getting ready to wash this, obviously, and I am very excited to do some Prineville, and I'm going to do this with, I'm pretty sure I'm planning to do this with white mohair so I generally don't do all white in the Prineville but um but it's been a while and I'm going to because beautiful all right time to wash all right I wanted to show you all this is the last of the merino it looks a little angelic doesn't it with the light coming through um here it is up close and I handpicked this with even more care because this is just the last like pound and a half, two pounds. I have it even lighter on the carter. So now, let me go back a little bit. Uh, I've got this at just over two ounces of feed, which is this blue to that blue. So this is a bit, like almost half of what I could normally card on a stronger wool per se. And here it comes out the other end. And it is carding up beautifully. There's a little bit of pilling. Um, and I also have the speed a little bit higher. I'm not sure how I feel about the speed, but it is carding up. Go in for you. It's carding up pretty well. I'm happy with it. I'm happy with it. So if you're asking, why is US Merino, uh, like if this Merino would cost more than if you bought commercially processed merino and this is why because I had to hand pick this I had to feed it through the machine at half the rate and um, and therefore that adds up to more cost on the other end so but it is lovely so there you go hey friends, I just thought I'd show you what I've got going on in the mill today not to be underrated 100% natural colored Romney on the carter and I am doing it into bumps just for fun. I don't know that I've done Romney into bumps but it's so easy to store <laughs> that that is why I am doing it for this. So if you have been in need of some Romney, there you go. It'll be restocked in the online shop. That's my goal for the next couple weeks is to restock some product. Okay. Those sheep have so much wool. Uh, it's almost giving me anxiety, but not really. I, I've mentioned it before, but generally speaking, I shear them twice a year. This year I said, throw all caution to the wind. Actually, no, I didn't. I used to shear them twice a year because I was going to make yarn with them. Most of the time, their roving goes so fast, I couldn't make yarn anyway. So, or there was no point in making yarn because all of my wonderful hand spinners would grab up the roving first. So I stopped worrying about that this year and said, um, and that was due to staple length. If the staple length is too long, it makes it harder to spin on a commercial machine. So this year I said, let's give it a go because some of the sheep are more single coated, are definitely single coated. And I wasn't getting a ton. I would get maybe three inches off of them. And I thought, let's try a year. I think I'm going to, I think what's going to happen moving forward is probably half of the sheep will get shorn every six months. Half of them will get shorn once a year. Um, because I think there's an excessive amount of wool on some of them. So we'll see. We'll see. Um, so hopefully they're getting shorn in Cuddlebug within the next couple of weeks. And I will grab some videos of that so you can see how tiny they are underneath those giant fleeces right now. So 
Wish is falling asleep on my lap. So therefore it must be time for me to go, right? Um, thank you all so much for watching. If you liked any of the product, jump into the online shop and grab it. I'm going to be restocking, restocking, restocking. That is my goal moving forward so that there is fiber for you all out there um, and available. So thank you all for your support. It's really amazing that I've had trouble keeping up with the online shop, but I'm ready for there to be some fiber there for you all. So um, thank you all. And thank you for watching and thank you for listening. That's it. So until next time, be kind to your neighbors, stay healthy and make so many pretty things. Thank you for watching. I will see you very soon.